Chapter 19 How can I describe this? I felt as though I was looking at the world through a thick pane of plate glass, or watching a movie I wasn't in. I was physically there, but I wasn't present. If someone yelled, Fire! I'd have thought, "Uh Uh-huh. But I wouldn't have stirred myself. Nothing was real or alive or important, including me. So this was drugs, I thought, slowly and vaguely. I didn't like them. It wasn't fun. i just say no on the next occasion when somebody offered to shoot me with darts. I tried to get up, but my legs didn't want to. Why would they want to? They weren't legs, they were rubber hoses. My mouth was dry. It wanted water. Perhaps the hose could provide them with water. I thought that was cute. I thought it was funny. I started to laugh. I lay in the alley and laughed like a nut. The laughter scared me. I wanted to sleep, but Buster insisted I try to get up. I thought I could do it. Cats have done more. Some, I've been told, have even made leaps as high as a footstool. I tried it again. This time, I managed to stand on my paws. I was ready for anything now. The Olympics medal for standing. Buster said, Walk. It seemed like an interesting, funny idea. I started walking. Walking was nice. It was something like dancing, without the music. I started humming. Buster said, Man, you are just so out of it. Lucky I stayed. For which I thank you, I said. From my bottom. He looked at me sideways. I said, From my heart. From the heart of my bottom. Is that how it goes? He looked at me sharply. I'm walking you home. Hey, you really don't have to. Of course I have to. You saved my life, Sam. You hadn't come in, he'd have killed me for certain. Watch it, he said or you'll step in that puddle. I saw the puddle, and even leapt it, I said. So there! We were almost at Bleecker. The street was dark, and the air was colder, a wind coming in with a raw touch of moisture, a promise of snow. It was clearing my head, though. I said, What happened? I mean, how do you happen to tangle with Hench? Well, I just wasn't certain you'd heard my warning. He crossed the office to pick up the lighter. I barreled ahead and he stepped on my tail, and then I attacked him. I can't say for sure if I did it to help you or just out of rage. And speaking of rage, I said, some of those parrots had personal grudges. It looked like it, huh? I mean, basically, parrots are peaceable birds. I stopped at the bookstore. You want to come in? If you're really okay, Buster looked at me closely. I'd kind of prefer getting back to the pearl. To the silverfish races, I added. Sure. There's this sweet little filly, he said. A two-year-old out of the drain pipe. I think she's got speed. Of course it all depends if the bathtub's wet. But you know where to reach me, he said. Room 20. He nodded slowly. I wished him luck. A Sony radio played on the pink linoleum counter at Kitten Caboodle. Against the darkness, a sweet soprano sang about silent and holy and bright, and Sue, with a ribbon as green as her eyes, lay directly on top of it lit from below by the flattering glow of its luminous dial. I was standing beside her, enjoying some cream from a porcelain saucer. It wasn't my first. I believe you've recovered, she noted, except for requiring a bath and a nightful of sleep. If you like, you can stay here. She flicked her tail at the pink quilted sofa and angled her head. 
Why, a fella'd be crazy, I mumbled. To leave? If the fellow in question, she muttered, were actually sane to begin with. But you, you jerk, like you'd rather go rattling around in some alley and get yourself shot at. I lifted my eyes. I didn't get shot, I announced, in an alley. Of course not, she said. You got shot in the butt. I got shot in a mansion. I'm truly impressed. She was rolling her eyes to make clear she wasn't. You're such a tough guy, she said. Such a sap. You'll go back again Monday and get yourself killed. Why would I do that? I finished my cream and was slapping that thirsty look back on my face. She appeared to ignore it. Because, she said sharply, it all leads to Gutless. To Gutless and a hench. Hench has the kitten, he said so himself. And at nine o'clock Monday. He's lying, I said. Hench doesn't have him. He's stalling for time. Oh, he might go hunting. He'll check in the alleys. He'll check in the gutters. He'll look in the pounds. But he doesn't have him. Hench is a blonde. And whoever's got Louie has skunk-like hair. So it isn't that simple. Well, how about this? She stood up on the radio, scratching her nails on the top of the grill work and arching her spine. How's about that what's-her-name, Dr. Laura? How's about maybe she might have been wrong? How's about maybe she looked out the window and saw Hench's watch cap and thought it was hair? And like maybe the moonlight was making a streak? But then what about Buster? What about Buster? He kept an eye out, and Hench didn't move. Buster, she said, is a known gambler. I hate to say it, but... Right, then don't. For a time, we were silent. Sue paced the counter. I licked at my whiskers and chewed a few nails. Okay, this is it, she said. This is the answer. I know who's got him, she blurted. Kent! Kent? The butler, she said. Oh, Sammy, the butler did it. The butler did what? The butler, she said, had a streak in his hair. You never saw him. You said so yourself. And he's working for Gutless, isn't he? So... So Gutless, she babbled, sent Kent to get Louis when Jimmy told Gutless he'd bungled the job. I nodded discreetly. Intelligent thinking. Oh, Sammy, really? She beamed. But wrong. I mean, Louis was stolen while Jimmy was out. He was still like a dead man at way after two when I got to the alley. And Louis was gone and he didn't call Gutless until he got home. But aside from that, I said, nifty thinking. Sue looked determined. Then how about Jacques? I looked at her wearily. Why Jacques? Did you ever see him? She said. You didn't. You never once got a look at his hair. Susie, I said. There are millions of scalps that I haven't examined. Does that make them guilty? She glared at me greenly and snapped at me. Yes. For a couple of seconds, we glowered in silence. Then Sue threw her paws up and said, I quit. This story is screwy. She sniffed. I mean, it's got interesting characters, patches of wit, some intelligent dialogue dozens of twists. But it doesn't make sense, Sam. The story's a mess, and it doesn't make sense, and it just never will. But it's got to, I told her. Why? She said sharply. Because it just got to. Let's try it again. I jumped to the sofa and stared at the ceiling. I started to picture the stuff that I'd seen. In Sebastian's pockets. 
Talk to me, Sammy. Say what you're thinking. Just say it aloud. She settled beside me and rested her chin on the edge of my shoulder. I patted her head. The radio bladded my favorite things. I tapped out the rhythm and thought about... things. The things that I had looked at, the stuff that I had missed, and then, to be funny, I sang out the list. Wallet with money and visa that's dented. Cell phone, a swell phone, she said. You're demented. Ticket for speeding as though he had wings. Sam? What's the subject? Sebastian? His things. Oh, she said. Well, was reciting them useful? Nope. But the rhyming is quite Dr. Seussful. Hmm. And the rhythm's so cloying it clings. So now do O'Shaughnessy's. Things? I said. Things. Um. Letter from lawyer evoking eviction. Ball points and car keys and unfinished fiction. Back of an envelope covered with scrawls. Stop, she said. Why? Because you'll never rhyme scrawls. My gosh, I said. Dozens of things rhyme with scrawls. But they'll never make sense. Did you see any balls? I shook my head. Did you see any shawls? I didn't, I said. So there's walls and there's halls, but then every apartment has walls and halls. So I bet you can't rhyme it and stick to the theme. I said, what are we betting? She grinned at me. Cream? Against? Well, against that tonight we don't part. Done, I said speedily. Start from the start. Okay, I said, rapidly tapping my art. Letter from lawyer evoking eviction. Ballpoints and car keys and unfinished fiction. Back of an envelope covered with scrawls. That is the sum of what Sammy recalls. Oh, foo, she said. You did it, and it even makes perfect sense. Yes, it does, I said. Doesn't it? I stopped for a second and thought. Oh, my goodness, I said. It does. I jumped to the carpet and raced for the door. Where are you going, Sammy? I looked at her. Back to the office. You don't want your cream? I'll come back for it later, I said, and went off. <laughs>